This video is a sample solution for the circle task, which is to translate this class named circle from Python into Java. This will go very similarly to the previous two tasks, which were the vector class and the rectangle class. So let's get into it. I'm going to declare a class named circle. I need braces for the body of the class. We're going to declare the fields and the constructor first. We need to work out the types of those fields. So we have a field named center and a field named radius to work out their types because Python doesn't require us to declare those types. We need to look at how these fields are being used. So we can see in the diameter method, we're doing two times self dot radius. So self dot radius must be some kind of number. Let's choose double for radius. And we can look at how center is being used. We can see in the bounding box method on lines 44 and 45, we have self.center.x, self.center.y. So center must be something that has an x field and a y field. So center must be a vector in this project. So we can declare this field of type vector. I'm going to declare the fields in the same order that they used in the constructor. So I'm declaring center before radius here. Let's declare the constructor, which is named circle, which is the same as the class. I need round brackets for a constructor and then braces for the body. This constructor takes two parameters, which are center and radius. We know that center is a vector. And we know that radius is a double. And then we're going to do this dot center equals center. This dot radius equals radius. So that's the fields and the constructor declared. Let's declare the method named diameter. We can see that we don't need any parameters here because we don't need self in Java. And this method returns two times the radius. The radius is a double, so two times a double is a double. Therefore, this method returns a double. And this method should be named get diameter in Java because get is a verb. And all we need to do here is return two times the radius. We could write this dot radius. It's not necessary in this method because there's no other variable named radius. Let's get the area. Again, let's work out the types first. We, did, we need no parameters here. Um, pi is a number. That's going to be a double. The radius is also a double. We're going to square it, so we're going to have a double here. Double times double is double. Therefore, the area method returns a double, and it should be named get area with a capital A in Java. No parameters for this method. If you do a Google search, you'll find how to get the constant pi in Java. It is math.pi with capital letters for pi. And we're going to return math.pi times the radius squared, which is the radius to the power two. So we can use the math.pow method here. And that's going to be the radius to the power two. Let's write the contains method. Again, we need to get the types correct first. This method is going to take a parameter named point. How are we using point? Well, it has a subtract method where we pass in a vector. So we know that the vector class has a subtract method that takes a vector as its parameter. And the subtract method returns a vector. So offset is going to be a vector. And we know that point must be a vector as well. Once we've got offset as a vector, then its length is going to be a double. Then we're comparing a double with a double. Well, if a double is less than or equal to another double, that's either true or false. So this contains method must return a Boolean. So it's Boolean contains, not get contains, because contains already is a verb. And this method takes a parameter named point, which we've worked out must be a vector. Line 40, we're declaring a variable named offset. We know that offset must be a vector because this subtract method returns a vector. So vector offset equals point dot subtract self dot center. That's a direct translation of that line into Java. And now we need to return this logical condition, which is offset dot length is less than or equal to the radius of this circle. Now I could write this dot radius. Oh, I don't need self here. It should just be center, shouldn't it? I could write this dot radius, but it's not necessary because there's no other variable it could be confused for. So at this point, I'm going to click compile to make sure I've got no syntax errors so far. Obviously, if I did have a syntax error, then I would want to go back and fix that before continuing. It's always a good idea to keep clicking compile when you expect there should be no syntax errors because you want 
what you've written so far to be correct before you move on. There's one more method to write here, which is called bounding box. And we need to work out the types again. This method takes no parameters. We don't need the self. And it's going to return a rectangle. And we wrote the rectangle class in the previous video. But because rectangle is a class, therefore rectangle is a type. And this method returns the type rectangle. The name should be bounding box in camel case. So rather than having an underscore here, I have a capital B for box. There's no parameters for this method. And let's translate these lines directly. First, we're going to get the x coordinates of the center field. We're going to use the get x method because center is a vector. We should use the method to access its fields rather than access them directly. And then we're declaring a variable cx. This x field is of type double, so cx must also be a double. Um, I'm going to call this C capital X because X is technically another word after C. This is short for center X. And then this is going to be center dot get X. And then let's do the same for center Y. So now that we've got CX and CY, we can use them in the next two lines. We're creating these variables P1 and P2, which we can see hold vector objects, or at least they hold references to vector objects. So we're declaring a vector p1, and we're going to create a new vector object. We can see that the constructor is being called here on line 46. To call a constructor, we need the new keyword, so new vector. And the parameters to this are cx plus the radius, and cy, oh, the, the first one is minus the radius, and then cy minus the radius. I don't need this dot or self dot, and um, because there's no other variable here. And then we can have vector p2 equals new vector. And this one should be cx plus the radius and cy plus the radius. So that's lines 46 and 47 translated. Finally, we're going to return a new rectangle object. We need the new keyword to create this rectangle. So we're going to say return new rectangle p1, p2. And if I click compile, I'm hoping to see no syntax errors. Again, if you do get a syntax error, then it may be something simple like missing a semicolon or missing a brace or missing a bracket. It may be something like accidentally writing a comma here. Um, the other reason you might get an error is if you've got the types wrong. So for example, if you say the point is a double, then this is not going to work because a double does not have a dot subtract method. Um, but as you can see in this case, the error is on this line where it says double cannot be dereferenced, but the mistake is actually on the previous line. We should have said that point is a vector rather than a double. So now when I compile, I should see no errors. That's a complete, complete solution to the circle task.